Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on this seventh day of January 2019, one week of the new year already gone by. And taking a look at the first graphic here, this is a uh, shot of uh, Chakitsik up in the upper Yukon Valley, east of Fort Yukon. Actually, it looks like it could be just about anywhere in interior Alaska, but uh, clear skies, and light winds, temperature at picture time, 45 degrees below zero, and uh, may drop down toward 50 below overnight tonight. And then uh, next graphic here, we've got 53 degrees below zero was recorded at Toke uh, during the morning hours today, and that was the coldest temperature since the 28th of January, 2015, so about four years ago. And, uh, you know, 50, 45 to 55 below isn't abnormal for toke during the winter months, but it's been four years since they've been this cold. Otherwise, we've got two to six inches of snow, of new snow, is expected to uh, push across the southeast areas, or push across areas of southeast Alaska during the night tonight, and then clear out tomorrow and end actually early tomorrow morning. And then that'll be followed by a Taku wind event. Uh, high wind watches out for the Juneau, the greater Juneau area, Admiralty Island, Douglas, and those areas uh, for Tuesday night and Wednesday. So you have the snow followed by a clearing period, uh, kind of a calm, and then over the northern areas, the wind picks up on Wednesday, or late Tuesday and Wednesday, as I mentioned. Otherwise, uh, colder temperatures to push across the northern and western part of the state here beginning uh, Wednesday and into Thursday as a cold upper level polar vortex drops southward from the Arctic. Looking at the uh, hazardous weather graphic, we've got uh, there in the uh, Delta Junction area here and those uh, normally windy areas, wind chill advisory until noon tomorrow. That's where wind chills 45 to maybe 50 below zero. And then down here on the southeast coast, the yellow shaded areas are the winter weather advisories for snow tonight, two to six inches. And again, that's uh, for tonight, ending actually at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. And not all the areas highlighted here, Sitka, Port Alexander, Mount Edgecombe, you're out of it. And uh, coastal areas of Prince of Wales Island also out of it, as well as Haines, the Klondike Highway on up to Sitka. You're going to, whatever snow you receive in those locations will be under advisory level. And then the yellow here, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, non yellow shaded area uh, is the high wind watch out for the Juneau, Douglas, Admiralty Island area for Tuesday night and Wednesday for those Taku winds kicking up as, a as the gradient tightens with building Arctic high pressure over the Yukon. Could see gusts 60, 70 miles an hour. Otherwise, back out here to the west, this is for this evening, and tonight we've got blowing snow pushing currently into the Yukon Delta. And uh, winter, winter weather advisories out for St. Lawrence Island and the Yukon Delta tonight. Winds gusting 30 miles an hour, creating snow and blowing snow that will reduce visibilities to a half mile at times. Otherwise, uh, a little farther to the north, Shishmaref, north side of the Seward Peninsula, as well as uh, the uh, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon area, maybe Kivalina and the Western Arctic coast, actually south of Point Lay, from Point Lay south. That's a wind chill advisory out through noon Wednesday for wind chills to 55 degrees below zero. Now moving on to satellite imagery, you can see the uh, white color here of much interior Alaska on into the Yukon. That's because the ground's so cold. Again, with those temperatures this afternoon, 40 to 50 below, uh, northeast of Chicken, 50 degrees currently. That's a cold spot this afternoon in the state there. And uh, again, with uh, Chuck Yitzek sitting at 45 below, a little milder out along the Arctic coast, and definitely milder here down to the southwest. Southeast winds gusting as high as 35 miles an hour push temperatures into the upper 30s here across the Alaska Peninsula with some light snow, as I mentioned, now pushing into the Nunavak Island area 
and the Yukon Delta coast and some clouds advancing eastward across Bristol Bay. Had a little weak disturbance here kick through and that brought just a skiff of snow here into areas of Cook Inlet and it's really dissipating now, just some clouds left over. Break behind that rolling into the Pribilofs again and then some more action, colder temperatures, snow showers west of Adak, especially out toward the Shimia and Attu area. And along the Panhandle, west-southwest flow carrying uh, moisture in over the top of the uh, colder air there, and that's uh, kicking off snow showers on the increase this afternoon. And this uh, weak circulation will be moving through, and again, two to six inches possible for tonight. Very weak low here, about 1,010 millibars, but uh, enough moisture with it. Again, looking for the snow for the snow advisories there, this high up over the Arctic uh, or the Northwest Territories. That's going to hold and actually maybe build a little bit, and this gradient will tighten Tuesday night and Wednesday over the northern southeast coast. Otherwise, not much change here over the interior. Upper level low sitting up over the Arctic, uh, keeping some clouds and very light snow flurries going on the eastern Arctic coast with fog back as far west as uh, the central coastal areas, Point Barrow. And then here's that weak system earlier today about in this position that's since already moved through and this front advancing onto the coast with uh, some increasing winds, gusts 30 miles an hour, snow, light snow developing into blowing snow tonight, mixed precipitation, milder air, Pribilofs on down to the Alaska Peninsula, showers ending eastern Aleutians, starting to increase a little bit, southwest winds, rain and snow showers, Adak and Atka, and then colder temperatures right around uh, freezing there at Chimia with snow showers. And for tonight, again, the winter weather advisors for the Yukon Delta and St. Lawrence Island. Areas of light snow push into Bristol Bay, maybe the southern Cuscoom Valley. Clouds to the north, clear and cold over the eastern interior. Lows tonight anywhere from 35 to 55 below. Again, Copper River Basin right on up and then milder with the clouds and that weak disturbance along the eastern Arctic coast. Maybe a few slight snow flurries possible here, southern Kenai Peninsula. Possibly uh, Cordova, but whatever occurs won't amount to too much. A little bit of a break continues, maybe some clearing for the Fox Islands with uh, light winds, no gradient there at all. It's a little too weak for really any wind conditions except along the front up through here. Again, those gusts 30 miles an hour. And then the push of the uh, colder air aloft here, numerous snow showers over the western and southwest Bering Sea, but this low center staying back to the west and the snow pushing across tonight uh, ends tomorrow morning and maybe some clearing showing up in the afternoon there. Here for the pan, that'll maybe a stray snow shower lingering along the coast, but definitely a big improvement there. This system down to the south will start to tighten the gradient up. You can see the higher pressure now from 1,030 to 1,038 millibars of that high over the Yukon. That'll start kicking those winds up tomorrow night here over the northern pan. That'll southeast flow. Snow possible into Kodiak, light snow, snow showers may be slipping up into western Prince William Sound, possibly tomorrow afternoon, more likely on the south side of the Kenai Peninsula, maybe over toward Cordova. Band leftover frontal moisture here produces an area of light snow from Cuscoom Bay, uh, I'm sorry, Togiak Bay, northeastward there across the lower, or the lower Yukon River Valley zone, clear and cold eastern interior again, few clouds to sit in the valley. Uh, may see lows down around minus 30 again tonight, like uh, Willow had this morning, and uh, skiffs of snow on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And out to the west, narrow band here actually picks up a little bit more moisture and thickens a little bit the next day there. Uh, so pretty good chance of uh, some light snow. Wind's not much of a problem there for the Pribilofs with this feature. Mixture precipitation, uh, give or take here for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, could see maybe several inches of snow. And then cold upper low pressure dropping into the north central interior starts pulling down into the western interior. That's going to pull cold air with it, even colder temperatures. But between that, southwest flow starts to increase. There'll be a band of snow right through here into the mid interior areas, White Mountains, all the way back down along the Alaska Range, probably escaping Cook Inlet, just some clouds, maybe some clouds for Kodiak. Outflow winds may be increasing. Copper River Delta definitely over the northern pan. Now you see very tight gradient now, low pressure to the south, and remaining high pressure over the Yukon, but quite a few lines. Again, high wind watches out for Juneau, gusts 60, 70 miles an hour possible. Lows tonight, uh, again, anywhere from, well, these are actually sitting right about what you're currently seeing now, so I'd say 35 to 50 below eastern interior. 
25 to 30 below Arctic coast north slope, uh, a little below zero here inland areas southwest interior, milder along the coast, upper 20s and mid 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, lows down to 10 at Skagway to as high as maybe 29 there at Port Alexander, and near freezing for the Aleutians, highs tomorrow afternoon well below zero, north and northwest of the Alaska Range, teens into the deltas, lower 20s along the southwest coast, and uh, teens here, south central Alaska, and teens to near 30, or maybe into the lower 30s there at Sitka. And for the lows the following morning, uh, milder here over the eastern interior now with uh, <clears throat> low temperatures anywhere from 25 to well, still maybe 40 below zero. Definitely uh, 30 to 45 below up over the north central interior, especially the north slope. And then uh, again, dropping back below zero, McGrath, Nikolai down to 12 below. Near 20 for northeast Bristol Bay. Highs the following day, looking like this uh, for the Panhandle. Teens up around uh, White Pass or Skagway to mid-20s and then into the lower 30s. It looks like most areas staying below freezing with those uh, strong outflow winds. Keep, definitely keeping it cold over the northern areas. Highs in the mid-teens, Cook Inlet uh, near 10 for the Susitna Maniska Valleys. Below zero, Tanana Valley and... Uh, 20 to 25 below up over the northwest interior to the north slope to near 20 below for the Arctic coast, 35 to 40 for the Alaska Peninsula, upper 30s for the central Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Narrow band of IFR here coming into the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta up to across St. Lawrence Island down across Togiak Bay to about Dillingham, otherwise marginal VFR, south side of the Alaska Peninsula back into the IFR. VFR here out to the west, including the Fox Islands, more IFR central Aleutians. IFR, uh, eastern north slope on out to the coast. VFR through all of the interior, right down to uh, about the Kenai Peninsula. Moisture on the increase here, southern Cook Inlet, southern Kenai Peninsula, right along the north Gulf Coast, but mostly offshore, central and southern Panhandle. Tomorrow afternoon, improvement here, uh, pulling back to just Prince of Wales Island for the marginal VFR there. IFR uh, near Montague Island, uh, actually in the afternoon, some of this marginal VFR may slip on up the west side of Prince William Sound. Otherwise, a band of IFR here out along the coast and well east of the Perbloss, marginal for the north slope to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. A little bit of IFR out over the west central Aleutians. And for Wednesday morning, that uh, sort of slips northward there, leaving it marginal until you get to uh, the Fox Islands here up to the Perbloffs IFR and IFR across Nunavak Island, but staying off the southwest coast, except for Cape Newenham. Marginal VFR Bristol Bay <clears throat> up across the Cuscoom Valley into the central interior with some uh, IFR around Indian Mountain there and possibly Tanana. IFR Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, VFR back to the west, VFR down the east side here into the Copper River Basin, 40 mile country, on down toward Dixon Entrance. And for the afternoon, <clears throat> some IFR slips up across Dixon Entrance into Prince Wales Island. IFR, central interior there, right around uh, near Fairbanks, mostly to the west though and to the north up toward the White Mountains. And then IFR Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast with uh, IFR for the Barrens. And more IFR out over the Perlofs, northward there to St. Matthew Island. Another batch there across Nikolsky. Passes both, Mar or both Attigan and Anatovic, marginal VFR throughout the day. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, same forecast, marginal VFR. And rainy, starting out VFR. So moisture sliding in from the west, so possibly coming marginal VFR in the afternoon. Windy, though, staying VFR all day long. Same forecast for Isabel and Mentasta, the eastern range staying open. Tania VFR, Portage VFR, again, possibly becoming marginal late in the afternoon. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels here, uh, again, at the surface, north of the Preblofs, almost up to St. Matthew Island to about Cape Newenham and then down to the Alaska Peninsula, east side of Kodiak, about like we've seen here up along the North Gulf Coast, uh, down toward Middleton Island, on down the outer coastline of the Panhandle, 2,000 feet there south of, uh, south of the Queen Charlottes. <clears throat> Moving on to icing, uh, some areas of possible light, or areas of light to isolated moderate rime icing here. Mostly central Aleutians, maybe out there at Shimianat too, and some moisture here. 
brings a threat of some icing here from Togiak Bay northward across the mid Yukon Valley, Cuscombe Valley area on out into Norton Sound. Another batch here possibly. None of this uh, really too significant, but Kodiak Island will see a chance on down the Alaska Peninsula. And moving on to the jet stream, high pressure there near Wrangell Island, and the flow around that allowing this cold upper level low to start dropping southward and actually forecast to drop right into the southwest interior over the next uh, two to three days as southwest flow develops across southern Alaska. But for tomorrow, it'll be there off the eastern Arctic coast. Main jet well to the south here, 150, 160 knots uh, away from the forecast area. 9,000 foot winds showing the main storminess out here way to the west. Westerlies 25 to 30, so not too bad here coming into the western Aleutians, although southerlies ahead of a frontal boundary 40 to 50 knots, mostly over the central northwest part of the Bering Sea. Really becoming light, kind of a weak flow here over the east and southeast Bering Sea with a weak system over the Yukon Cuscombe Delta. And then southwest flow 20 to 25 knots, central interior, lighter toward the Arctic coast, lighter down to the south, really light in the Gulf of Alaska from Kodiak on in across the Panhandle. Same flow, kind of a little more easterly here at 3,005 to 15 for the Panhandle. Southerly is 25 there in advance of that weak low over the Yukon Delta. Stronger westerlies, 20 to 30 knots. That's about it there for the western Aleutians. Otherwise, uh, <clears throat> hit that front, maybe 20 to 30 knots. And then some easterlies there across the Chukchi Sea and the Bering Strait. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop, Nunavak Island, St. Lawrence Island. And a little bumpy, not too bad though for the Aleutians. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining me once again is Cindy Preller. She is the Tsunami Program Manager for the National Weather Service in Alaska region. Thanks for joining us again, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. We're talking about tsunami awareness and safety here in Alaska especially, and one of the things that has been uh, your, one of your main focuses is uh, the Tsunami Ready Program. What is that, and uh, how do Alaskans find out more? Awesome. Yes, yeah, Tsunami Ready is a National Weather Service hosted program mm -hmm. in uh, partnership with Storm Ready. Okay. And it is a program that we uh, conduct with our partners in the state, mm -hmm. but it's mostly community driven. So if okay. a community wants to become Tsunami Ready, well, the first thing they need to do is get a hold of me or, or their local WCM at a weather mm -hmm. forecast office okay. or their Tsunami uh, team at the state level. So, and this is something that's a NOAA grant, so there's money available to help encourage the preparedness at, at the local level there in the city or the, uh, the village. Yeah. What are some of the places that have done this already? Oh, our oldest tsunami ready city is Seward. Good. You know, but also Sitka, Homer, Valdez are the, you know, the main players, but we've got, mm -hmm. we've got several tsunami ready communities that I'm very proud of. It takes several years to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so a few of the things that they do is um, the tsunami risk will be assessed by okay. someone like me or another scientist will help find out, you know, really what their probability is. Mm -hmm. We'll create an inundation map, an evacuation map. Okay. They'll have a mitigation plan. Um, we will set up uh, some partnerships with the schools, yeah. uh, make an evacuation shelter, and then they need to practice. But it is the city that owns the program, really. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. And many cities would like to have sirens, and so we help them get those. And you know, and they practice. They have to practice. Sure. So let's say I'm driving into a place like Seward that's tsunami ready. What are some of the things I should look for as maybe a visitor, that no, so I know maybe where I need to go or can be more aware of my tsunami risk? Absolutely. The tsunami ready signage is, is really blatant. It's this, okay. you know, blue and white curling wave sign and, mm -hmm. and there's different shapes of signs that will show you if you are in the hazard zone or mm -hmm. where the evacuation routes are and when you're out of shelter. Okay. So this is a, a multi-step process that helps the uh, residents be more aware of their own risk but then also prepare for when that risk arrives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, many communities um, uh, sound their sirens daily, some sound, sound them weekly, you know, okay. to make sure everybody knows what they mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's often drills. We have an annual drill once a year. We have Tsunami Awareness Preparedness Week. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time for each community to, to do some exercising. Okay. And is this a program that is unique to Alaska? Absolutely not. It's national. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, 
all over the country, you'll have the same signage, so it's, it's consistent. Good. So if I'm taking the kids to California, I should be able to see something familiar. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, some communities hesitate because they think it'll discourage tourism. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tell those communities that what they're actually doing is they're encouraging responsibility. Sure. The tsunami is going to happen. Right. And it's going to hit every coastline. So, you know, it's, it's not about when. It's, mm -hmm. It'll be any time. So the fact that they're showing tourists that they are making steps to be prepared for this, I think, would encourage people to want to stay there. Right, and that would be no different than, say, you or I visiting the Midwest where we know there's going to be really bad thunderstorms and maybe there's a risk for tornadoes. We're, we're aware of that risk when we go there. Absolutely. If I see a sign for a tornado shelter, I'm going to remember that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're just doing a better job of being more prepared with something that's bound to happen again. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Where can people uh, go again to learn more about the Tsunami Ready program here in Alaska? Well, one, there is a Tsunami Ready website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just Tsunami Ready Google and that'll tsunami get ready. you there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then probably the best person for people to contact is their warning coordination meteorologist okay. at their local weather forecast office, which is Anchorage or Juneau, most likely. Okay. All right. So most of the folks along the Bering Sea coast, again, are not at a huge risk for tsunamis. No, at this they don't need to worry about it. Okay, Thank very you. good. But always learning to be uh, prepared no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, no matter what the risk, always a good step. And tsunami is a major player in that, as we well know from events like 1964. Mm -hmm. okay. Alaskans are resilient. I really believe in them. Very good, very good. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, please make an effort to uh, learn more about the Tsunami Ready program in your village and uh, town if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back with Cindy again uh, next time to talk more about the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. We actually have a group of geologists working for the National Weather Service. So scratch your head on that one, and we'll join you next time. I'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. <music>And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis uh, still showing advancing west and southwest, mostly to the west, though, a little bit to the south uh, component there in the direction. And a uh, big push of cold air coming in here over the next several days, starting uh, probably on Wednesday over the northern bearing and pushing southward. So it'll be it looks like uh, by the weekend, the ice edge will make landfall on the north shore of St. Matthew Island and Cook Inlet ice all the way down to Kenai now, and that too is going to continue to uh, build uh, down south and in Kamishak Bay. You can see a little bit there now. Coastal water forecast, east 15 along much of the coastline, southeast 15 extreme north coast, sea 6 to 7 feet, north 30 knots, sea 6 feet, Lynn Canal, Small Craft Advisory, Stevens Passage for winds out of the north and North 20 for Clarence Strait. And then the forecast, storm warnings out for Northern Lynn Canal with higher gusts and seas 12 feet. Gales out for Stevens Passage for those northerly winds and North 25 for Clarence Strait. Small craft advisories uh, here for the central and south coast. East northeast 25 to 30 knots, seas 9 to 11 feet. Lighter winds up north, northeast 20, seas 7 feet. Prince William Sound, northeast 15, seas 3 feet. Same thing for Northern Cook Inlet. Small craft advisory south of the Forelands, though, northeast 30, all the way down to Kamishak Bay. Only east to 10 for the Barren Islands. And for the uh, western North Gulf Coast, small craft advisories, east winds at 25, lighter winds off to the east. And then for Wednesday, Prince William Sound, north 15, northeast 10, Northern Cook Inlet. Small craft advisories continue here south of the Forelands into Kamishak Bay and uh, north. East 15 for the Barrens, northwest 15, western North Gulf Coast, swinging around to the north at about 20 there toward Middleton Island. <clears throat> and for Shillikoff Strait, east winds 20 knots, 4 foot seas, east side of Kodiak, southeast 15, and Sitkanak to Castle Cape, south of 20, and then east northeasterlies 15 to 20 for the Alaska Peninsula for Tuesday, and Bristol Bay easterlies at about 20 knots. And then for the uh, Wednesday outlook, Bristol Bay, northeast 15, and east northeast 20 here for the peninsula, east 20 on up to Sitkanak, Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait, northeast of 20, seas up to 9 feet. And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, uh, kind of a variable wind direction here, predominantly from the east or southeast or northeast, 20 knots, swinging around to the south and then southwest, 30, 35 for the Adak-Atka area, 25 to 30 knot winds, a little stronger out west of Kiska Island. 
And then for the uh, Wednesday outlook, uh, Kiska to Shimia, South 20, Kiska to Adak, Southwest 15, Adak and Atka, e uh, West, pretty light, not bad at all, 10 to 15 knots, laying down pretty good along with the seas. North 15 to 20, turn east 15 to northeast 20 there on, uh, for Unalaska Island. And the southwest coast tomorrow, south of Nunavak Island, northeast at about 15, and seas in the ice-free waters six feet. It, that area is getting pretty close to being completely covered in that marine zone, though. We're still going six feet in the open areas. 20 knots out of the east, uh, increase to 30 knots for St. Lawrence Island, south 25 for the Permaloft, southeast 25, St. Matthew Island. For Wednesday, Perbolofs east at 20, northeast 20 here for all of the southwest coast, east 25, St. Matthew Island, northeast 25, St. Lawrence Island, and up along the Arctic coast, east or west-northwest, 5 to 10 knots, pretty light here on the east side, north 10 on the central coast. Pick it up here, especially down from Point Lay all the way down to the Bering Strait, uh, northeast at 20. And then the next day, lighten it up a little bit here for the western Arctic coast, but from Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales, northeast winds at 20 knots, east side, west at 10. And for tonight, uh, weak trough up there gives a few skiffs of snow, patchy fog right along the coastline, Barter Island over to uh, maybe New Exit, clear back to the west, clear and cold over the interior, again, 35 to 50 below, especially Copper River Basin, eastern interior. And... Uh, Winter Weather Advisory, Yukon Delta, St. Lawrence Island tonight, 30 mile an hour wind gusts, visibility is down to a half mile and blowing snow at times. And uh, Winter Weather Advisory is here for the Panhandle, two to six inches of snow as that mass of moisture shifts inland with a low hanging back offshore, a weak low in this front bringing moisture into Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. Leftover moisture, light snow along this trough and also some showers of rain or snow, Kodiak in the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow. Break in the Panhandle. And then uh, the next day, high wind watch out tomorrow night and Wednesday for Juneau for gusts 60, 70 miles an hour. Rain moves in over the southern areas late in the day. Some snow in the central interior, otherwise clear and cold with some snow in the Alaska Peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.